The following is a special presentation of HBO Sports. Welterweight champion Felix Trinidad is only 22 years old. Question, has his rise been so swift because of true greatness? Or is Trinidad being pushed to the top by an island over-eager for a hero? The answers may lie in the past. Trinidad comes from Coupe Alto, a relatively poor section of Puerto Rico. As with many towns here, its poverty stands in stark contrast to the beauty of its tropical surroundings. Perhaps it is because of economic deprivation that Puerto Rican champions become such national icons. In the 70s and 80s, Wilfredo Gomez won three world championships and the hearts of all Puerto Ricans. Soon after, Wilfred Benitez also won three titles. Common threads to Benitez, Gomez, and Trinidad, all champions by their early 20s. But not all Puerto Rican champions become legends. Edwin Rosario had but brief moments of greatness. And Hector Camacho won his share of titles as well. It didn't matter that Camacho and Rosario never reached the lofty status occupied by Gomez and Benitez. Puerto Ricans always provided unconditional support. Felix Trinidad senses this collective will. I know that every time I go into the ring, the people of Puerto Rico are always counting on me, and perhaps more than this, what a feel comes from their hearts. Because in Puerto Rico, their hearts are behind me, supporting me, so that I win. And everyone always says, Tito, let's go. Tito, let's go. You can do it. Trinidad's personal bloodline also swelled with success. His father and trainer, Felix Trinidad Sr., was the featherweight champion of Puerto Rico in the 1970s. Felix Jr., whom everyone calls Tito, watched his father lose his only title shot in 1979. My father has been an inspiration because he always said that he wanted me to be able to do everything he could not do or would not do. He wasn't as lucky as I am, but he was a great fighter. Now Tito has a chance to finish what his father began. He puts together a combination of dad's experience and determination with his own much better luck. Tito's needed the whole package because he's been knocked down in four different fights. But each time, Trinidad has come back to knock his opponents out. Tonight, he goes for his 23rd knockout in 27 fights. In that moment when I have gotten knocked down, I often really think that my fellow Puerto Ricans are counting on me and waiting for me to get up. And yeah, I like to recall the next uh, great Puerto Rican champion. And that's what I am uh, shooting for, and that's what I really want. Tonight, family and country watch expectantly as Felix Tito Trinidad takes his next step toward his almost predetermined destiny. the veteran Larry Barnes. Even though he has a record of 39 and 1, he enters here for his very first world title fight. Barnes is a terrific kid with an unusual background. I've never heard of a fighter before whose main job is as a school aide in which he worked with a swimming team at Mount Vernon High School in New York City. He himself was a diver in high school. Gotta love a guy who uses entry music that even the folks in my generation can remember and identify with. How about that, George? We know this song. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Well, some of them. <laughs> and you saw the record for Barnes, 39 wins, one loss. That loss was to the then past 40 years old, Saul Mambi. And uh, he's only had 15 knockouts. He is, by his own admission, not a power puncher. Harold Letterman, who was at that fight, has told us that Barnes definitely won it. So Harold Letterman thinks it's 40-0. You know, the rest of us will just have to accept 39 and 1. And now Barnes waits in the ring as there's a momentary delay in Felix Trinidad's exit from his dressing room. Come on, 
The most amount of money this young man has ever made in a fight was $15,000. Tonight his purse is close to a quarter of a million dollars. So many of the fighters in this sport are sweet, sensitive people. Larry Barnes is as nice a man as you could ever want to meet. The question is whether this fight is diving off the cliff of, of Acapulco for him. All the numbers on Trinidad, 14 rounds in the last 14 months. He's been getting quick knockouts, and he's been having long layoffs between fights. Which is one of the reasons he, he is trying to uh, break his contract with Don King, which is the only way that a, a fight with Whitaker could happen. He is in court in that effort right now. The most money he has ever made is $300,000. He'll make a million tonight. relatively small number of amateur fights turned pro very early rather than to try to go the Olympic route which might have been available to him coming from Puerto Rico but he got started at a tender age and as we've mentioned at age 22 gets ready for his 27th professional fight has some impressive knockouts on his dossier there you see his father, who trains him, says that they have avoided the usual problems that exist between fathers and sons in the ring by being flexible, which is to say, giving Trinidad, the young Trinidad, some distance and space and not being all over him. And a look at the record, 26-0 and 0, 22 knockouts for Felix Trinidad. Let's go up to the ring to Michael Butler for the fight introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's Convention Hall, where tonight, by way of Valley Park Place Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey, main event monitor in association with your undefeated, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This bud for you presents a double rumble in the welterweight division. These bouts are sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. The first title bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, IBF President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor Ringside, Benedetto Montella. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Samuel Condit, Julio Mancini, and Shafiq Rashada. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Benji Estevez. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first of two times from Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black and weighing in at 146 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one of 39 and 1, 15 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, the pride and joy of Mount Vernon, New York, the number one right IBF talent in the world, Larry Goffey. across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 147 pounds. His professional record, 26 and 0, 22 KO. Wearing in the ring tonight, red with white and blue trim, Senoras y Senores, con Cupeato Puerto Rico, presentando Invicto IBF 
Welterweight champion of the world, the undefeated Felix Tito ya te di las instrucciones obedece todas las reglas y los órdenes que debes durante el combate obey my commands during the match te protege durante el combate todo el tiempo protect yourself at all times buena suerte good luck touch up it's great to want to be great Jim and Trinidad clearly does want to be great let's see how great he is tonight the Trinidad camp followers after the weigh-in yesterday expressed surprise at how Larry Barnes looked. They complimented his build and said this guy's stronger than we thought he was and he lands a left hook in the early going as Trinidad backs up and gets ready to try to establish the jab. So Barnes coming out aggressively. He said he would put his head on Trinidad's chest and keep it there and it looks like he is as good as his word. He's already been hit with a nice left hook on the side of the head. Believe me, it wasn't a slip, those hooks. Barnes is going to try to stay inside against Trinidad. He must get inside of that punching lane. How can he do it, George? Well, you you got to concentrate less on landing the punch as you are. You got to concentrate on getting closer to the opponent. Forget about the punch and just get your head, touch your shoulder, then start punching. What about the big man, little man thing here with Barnes trying to punch up at the much taller Trinidad and Trinidad coming down with punches? Does that give Felix a big advantage? No doubt about it. Being smaller sometimes can work to your advantage. But you got to stay down, only come up to punch. Keep him up, keep him up, Larry. Trinidad with an uppercut. If Barnes stays in this position, uppercuts are going to work for Felix. One thing you don't want is Felix Trinidad to get his jab in rhythm. Then Barnes is going to have a hard night. Try to keep moving your head so he never get a good rhythm with his left jab. Barnes should be concentrating on it. Barnes not close enough right now to execute his fight plan. If he's going to have a chance to do what he thought he could do, he must stay well inside of Trinidad's jab. difficult against a fighter who not only punches well, but as you can see, moves well, too. Trinidad getting more and more comfortable now against Barnes. Seemed to be a little thrown off at first by the bobbing and the hyper-aggression of Barnes trying to get inside. left, one of them landed a glancing blow. Good shot, short left hook by Trinidad. Barnes is going to have to keep his right hand up as he comes inside or Trinidad will land that left hook at will. going to see something folks you've never seen before in a major fight 
and that is Larry Barnes as the man in the nickel now. You, you've heard of okay. end swells, the body? which are made okay, of, the, of, the, of, the, of a copper yeah, compound to, the, to okay. reduce now, swelling. Second, they have a mask right. that you they put right over, on his entire face, face to what reduce hands, swelling. What do you okay. think of this, George? You want the idea, you I think so, but I don't like the idea of the nose being covered at any time. You've got to breathe. open the nose hole, you think it's a great idea. Yeah, you just got to exempt the nose from that covering up because you can't have anything pressing on that nose. Keep your hands off Bobby Weiss, but if you finish first. In this corner, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Take it easy. Just, just be careful. And take it easy. If, if you hit the body, if you come things forward, just hit the body. Vinny that threw 85 punches in round number one. That's it. an extremely busy opening round for Trinidad, who in his recent fight has been starting much slower than that. This looks like a bush going up against the tree, George. <laughs> you know, it's strange that Trinidad, he's small looking, but he was able to deliver a good left hook to the body just like his daddy told him to. Good sharp punches by Trinidad. Barnes still not getting close enough to get inside of Trinidad's jab and his power punches. Barnes is right at home lunging in with those left hooks. Wow shot. That's what he do. He'll do that all night. But in most of his wins against lesser fighters, George, he's been able to out-hustle and outwork them. It's going to be awfully tough to do against the guy as skilled as Felix Trinidad. And Felix Trinidad has gotten spent some time on building up his points, too. He's throwing a lot of power shots, but he's got to make sure that he's willing and ready to go the distance. Arms wrestling his way in to throw a left hook to the body. Trinidad steps back and starts to try to pick his shots again. A young fighter like Trinidad is probably missing more big shots in these early rounds than he ever has before, George. Do you think it bothers him? At the same time, that's what I said earlier, he should try to build up some points at the same time. Be ahead on the score in case you don't get that knockout. He's missing some shots he need not even be thrown at this point. Round two, a little bit more cautious round for Trinidad, more like what we expected as he kind of eyeballs Larry Barnes' hyper-aggressive, hyper-bobbing style. Trinidad missing with the right hand that might have done some damage after landing that short left. For the first time, Felix Trinidad has been able to bob and weave underneath a shot. From where Barnes is working, he's going to have a hard enough time seeing the target, much less hitting it. Oh. He looks like somebody on the beach looking for coins. His eyes almost straight down on the canvas much of the time. And his dad missed one right hand, landed one. Barnes landed a wild left hook. Be careful. We go to the third round. Now, listen to me. Move that jab. When you move that right hand, he's trying to move his left. When you move your right, you're moving his left. When he comes in, just hit him in, the, in his body. Just hit that body. We hook one hand and back down fist. So don't give him some side moves left, okay? Just, just let cut it off. You're doing okay. Miss a lot of punches. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Stay close. Stay close. Okay? Well, come this way. Relax, man. Because, because that mask is killed, his corner people say it helps to revive him very quickly. Yeah, they also believe it brings down his heart rate by cooling the body. 
giving him more stamina over the long course of the fight. Barnes threw only 30 punches in round number two. As he comes out for the third round, he's standing a little bit straighter up and in a better position to try to throw. But that might make more openings for Trinidad. Wild right hand missed by Barnes, and Trinidad was able to land a couple of those punches in return. hook inside to the body by Trinidad. Trinidad's corner has been telling him to throw to the body and he's the only one being active in the body. You would think that Bonds wanting to slow him down would have landed more shots to the body by now, but he hasn't. guy has had trouble making weight and might be a little dehydrated that's all the more reason to go to the body early and try to take his legs away you would think so but if you can see from the camera Trinidad's body looks awful dry when the fighter's having a rough time making a weight, he'll be wet you see the thighs be a little more puffy the thighs aren't that puffy so he hasn't had that much of a hard time getting that body to weight down left hook was partially blocked there Trinidad is getting some opportunities here in round three to set his feet and throw those power punches. Talk about Trinidad trying to go to Barnes's body, George. Larry's so much smaller. Five-inch height advantage for Trinidad. How hard is it to get down to the level you've got to get to to throw those body punches? A good right hand by Barnes, by the way, but at the same time, Trinidad is able to stoop and bend his knees and get the same height every now and then. That's how he's able to do it, which is very courageous for a tall fighter. As you saw then, he actually weaves that left jab. Hard left hook. Best punch of this round by Trinidad. Barnes has been in against some, some guys who can crack, notably Glenwood Brown, back pretty close to the time when Glenwood was good, and Barnes weathered that storm and won the fight by decision. And in the dressing room, Waiting his turn in the ring for Al Whitaker. Acknowledged king of the welterweight division. Generally regarded as one of the two best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Some would still use him as the best. His opponent tonight, Jake the Snake Rodriguez. And Cornell with his beloved mirror visualizing the fight as it will happen. Okay, Larry. Concentrate, don't smoke. Concentrate, I thought the ring off. Relax. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. no. You gotta keep up. You gotta punch more. You gotta punch. Great punch. You wanna do any LB? Okay, turn around. Get fancy too, okay? So hook down here. You're doing great. There's a foot man. Felix Trinidad connecting at 57%. According to Punch That Number so far, that's the same percentage at which he connected against a strong fighter named Uba Carr on route to a knockout of Carr. But but you know he's he's like a race car that's usually uh in fifth gear or a higher gear who is doing more backing up more in reverse than he's probably used to and so he's not really settled down to land his, his best power shots very often there you see him trying to stand his ground a little bit more instead of just moving well what you try to do as a boxer you get that tight circle you want to move, but at the same time, you don't want to get from in the middle of that ring. Trinidad is doing an excellent job this round. He's moving, but in a circle of fashion. And trying to get the song going with his jab. You tap, 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 tap. That's why you change the music, but you can get a rhythm to what you're doing. As Barnes settles down and doesn't lunge in quite so much, he becomes a more consistent target for Trinidad and gives him a better chance to get the rhythm going with the jab. And here it comes. He 
He's got a rhythm and a, and a little rhythm going right now. Kennedy has. And that's what Barnes shouldn't allow him to do. Well, Barnes is going to have to go back to lunging wildly. The more unorthodox Barnes can be, the better shot he'll have at throwing Kennedy. This is a legitimate knockout puncher at 147 pounds. I thought he was playing a little possum. He was stung but not badly hurt and looking for a big opening. Now he may be hurt. What a game kid he is, Larry Barnes. An overachiever against one of the most talented fighters in the ring. And what about the precision of Trinidad's finishing effort, George? Is he doing the right He's thing? He's been told to really respect this guy. He's in with the number one contender, so you heard him. Start back from the, from the bottom and go back up again. Go to the body. You get too wild, this guy's still strong. He's been a number one contender for and pass for a long time. A very patient clinical effort by Felix Trinidad and he is racking up oh. damage against Larry Barnes <laughs> and a body shot put him down four five six that was somebody seven eight oh, there you, no, there you. Oh, there you. Ad advertised that was sun finish took his time waiting for the opportunity Okay, and okay, did a okay. terrific job of closing the deal. And you see there why Felix Trinidad is being compared as a two-fisted punter to some of the greatest fighters who have ever fought. George, he didn't look like a 22-year-old as he carried out that execution. I thought for certain he would go wild and start lunging in for that finish once he heard him the first time. I was shocked to see him be so patient. Sometimes that's what you need, your dad in your corner sometimes. Someone you really respect to teach you properly, take your time. Only a father can do that properly. Sometimes trainers are better at it, but a father is the best. He shows patience, confidence, precision, and technique all in the same package. Not like a 22-year-older at all. So Felix Trinidad makes the most of his HBO debut, and let's take a look back at the first big punch that hurt Barnes early in the round. That short left hook had been a weapon all the way through. Well, it all became about because he was able to slip that left jab. Now he's taking his time, fix his head back, not to get wild on the corner. Jab, back to the body a little bit, uppercut, but watch what you're doing. Moves him to better position. Even when he's wobbling, he doesn't get wild. Get left foot right back, still again, double right hand, left hook. Watch what you're doing most of anything. Get back. You don't want to be caught by a lucky shot. And here comes the end, and watch for the sensational body shot right there. That did it. And when you get knocked down truly with a body shot after receiving those kind of hit shots, it's seldom that you get up. Well, it took three plus rounds for Larry Barnes to settle down and adopt the posture of a conventional fighter. But once he did, he was too easy a target for Felix Trinidad. Trinidad has an excellent left jab. And that jab started hitting you an occasional hook in there. Hardly any way to protect yourself. Well, let's go up to Michael Buffer now for the official particulars on this knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Benji Estevez calls a halt to the bout, stopping at the count of eight. The official time, two minutes, 54 seconds of round number four. The winner, and still the undefeated IBF welterweight champion of the world, Eddie Pico Trinidad. Go, 
Go into the ring. Con congratulations on a spectacular finish. Okay. Felix, tell us what was going through your mind in the early rounds because he was such a difficult, unorthodox opponent to get measured. Sí, bueno, eh, que, es que Larry Vance es un peleador de incómodo, se baja mucho. Uh, Larry Vance is a very uncomfortable fighter. He, he's very low. And, and were you feeling uncomfortable fighting him in turn? ¿Te sentías un poco inconfortable saliendo con él? No, bueno, sí, se hizo, se hizo un poquito incómodo en ese primer asalto, pero poco a poco fui adaptándome al ritmo de pelea. It, it was very uncomfortable in the first few, the first few rounds, but I, I got used to it after the, after the couple of rounds. In the last round, it seemed you were a little bit more settled down and a little bit more accurate in your punches. Was that because you finally got his rhythm and knew how to deal with him? En los últimos asaltos estabas un poco más confortable y te sentías mejor. ¿Por qué te dio hacer eso? Bueno, mi gran condición. Mi gran condición y poco a poco yo siempre me adapto poco a poco round por round. His conditioning was uh, superb and round by round he just got better. All right, we're going to tell him we're going to try to show the knockdown and ask him to describe it to us, uh, particularly that vicious body shot that really ended the fight. Uh, it, we'll get it up here in a minute, fellas. Uh, tell, tell us about the body shot that really ended. Que no, no se queda el, el, el golpe al cuerpo que le dice que, que terminó la pelea. Bueno, yo quiero decirle que yo pego bien duro con la mano de ancho de izquierda. El, el es un boxeador que aguanta mucho golpe. I, I just know that I can hit with my left and with my right just as hard, and Larry Barnes uh, can hold a punch. Así mira mucho golpe. He can hold All right, talk to us about Pernell Whitaker. There are many talented welterweights out there, but you're the only one that seems to truly want to fight him. Why? Uh, háblanos de Whitaker. Uh, hay mucho, muchos peleadores allá afuera en, ese, en esa división, pero eres tú el que quiere pelear con Whitaker. Sí, bueno, esa pelea este, a, a él le interesa, a mí también me interesa mucho. Yo espero que este año que viene, en 96, ya esa pelea se esté efectuando ya. Yeah, he's interested, and uh, so, so it's, uh, uh, Tito's interested, and uh, in 1996 that fight can go on. Thank you very much. Congratulations once again. Thank you. I want to thank uh, uh, Levin and uh, for helping us so much. All right, a commercial for Fred Levin, the lawyer who is trying to get him out of his present contract with Don King. Back to Rinko. Versus Felix Trinidad. Let's get the official introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the San Diego Sports Arena in beautiful San Diego, California as Don King Productions and Showtime in association with Arena Boxing present a big night of action, fire and water. At this time we bring to you the first of our two double main events, the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World. This bound is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. The President, Robert Lee, Supervisor Al Lucas, along with the California State Athletic Commission, the Chairman, William Eastman, the Executive Officer, Dr. Richard DeCure. Now presenting the judges as appointed. We have Gwen Adair, Paul Artis, and Samuel Conde. Introducing the referee in charge of this main event, you'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Robert Bird. Right fans, here we go with the IBF Welterweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner. He is wearing white trunks with red trim, hailing from Coupe Alto, Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 145 and one half pounds, and he enters the ring with an unblemished record of 19 wins, no losses, and 16 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the number seven IBF welterweight contender. Please welcome the undefeated challenger, Felix Tito Trinidad. 